share a few portraits of different types of people I've tried to capture in the last three or four years. This is an oil portrait I did of one of my friends and mentors, Vasily Rudic, who's had a very interesting life. He escaped a very oppressive regime in the 80s, and he's been a, a professor at Yale University for the last 20, 25 years. He knows everything through books. When he reads, it gives him so much pleasure, and he's one of the greatest brains I know. So the next image is uh, called Sacred Gossip, and I photographed this in one of the temples in uh, Timpu, the capital of Bhutan. And what I love about it is the playfulness of it. You know, monks are monks, but they're still young men or young boys. It reminds me of Arnold saying, you know, we need more sweetness and light. I love the fact that where people can have a sense of humour and enjoy life, we can't be too serious the whole time. You know, yes, they can be men of the cloth or whatever, doing their great enlightenment. It's nice to see that they're having a a laugh at the same time. So this is the, the young priest who runs uh, the, the Temple of the Divine Madman, and it's, it, it's called uh, Chimilakan. It's also known as the Temple of the Penises. And men, women, but in particular women, go there if they're having pregnancy issues, fertility problems. And you, you have lines of people going there. And I was able to photograph this young man who was looking after the inner sanctum there. Wise before his ears, I think. So the next image wasn't shot in the Punjab or in Delhi. It was shot in Queens, New York City. It was shot at the Gurdwara Sikh uh, temple. This man is interesting because I sort of came across him in the kitchen. He was washing dishes. And um, it reminded me of that whole journey, as I said earlier, from warrior father to sage. It also reminded me of that, I think it's a Zen Buddhist saying about enlightenment. Before enlightenment, uh, what do you, before enlightenment, chop wood and um, and carry water. and carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. And there's this man here washing dishes, and he had this amazing presence, and of course this amazing beard. The next image I photographed in Jerusalem, two Hasidics in, 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 in Jerusalem, where the uh, Christian quarter and the Jewish quarter intersect, intersect, looking at something they wouldn't normally look at. I just love that sense of curiosity about the other. For me, so much of what we have to do is empathy towards something we don't know as opposed to being frightened of something we don't know. The next image I photographed here in New York City, and it's um, really about the inner, joint, inner journey of the same man. This is a man who was from the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community, and this is his journey looking at himself. I photographed it obviously at two different stages in his life. One was a year earlier, where he still felt associated with the community from which he comes, and a year later he had decided in his own life journey to make some changes to evolve. And I feel also there's a tenderness. There's not a judgment so much. There's a sense of evolution. And that's a lovely place to be as opposed to saying, oh, that's bad because I'm not that anymore. Or I don't like the future. That's corrupt. So this is karmic evolution happening. The next is a formal portrait I did of President Olusungun Obasanjo, who was the president of Nigeria 10, 15 years ago. And I painted this portrait two and a half years ago, and it now hangs in his uh, presidential library in Abuja. For me, it was all about uh, definitely the face, but also the, the costume. Just It was so sumptuous. Uh, you can call it a babarika or agbada. And um, I had such pleasure at trying to capture this light, and also hopefully trying to show a man. Of course, I met him post-power. Again, it's not for me to make uh, judgments on the past. I'm not about that. I'm trying to understand a man or a human being when I meet them. I found he had a great nobility and a sense of responsibility, um, power, but also a somewhat melancholy reflectiveness. The next painting I did last year when I was attending a conference at Harvard University on East-West relations with uh, the Harvard uh, Kennedy School. And I got to spend some time with Right Honourable Kevin Rudd, who was Prime Minister of Australia, and he's really a great Sinologist. I mean, he is an expert on China. He knows Chinese. He speaks Chinese like I speak English. He, he is an absolute example, a paragon of, of someone who is trying to build that bridge between East and West. And I know both sides of the table listen to his advice on a regular basis. And I wrote down, you know, first time I've ever tried Chinese characters, I don't speak Chinese, uh, on the right, um, some pieces from his uh, some of his writing, explaining some of the ways in which he thinks East and West can avoid what he calls the Thucydides trap, which is when you have a hegemon power like the United States, which is losing its control, and you have a rising power like China, how do you avoid conflagration? How do you avoid war? And 17 out of 20 times you have war. How can we be in that uh, 
space where we can negotiate uh, the 21st century properly. It's vital what he does, and um, in my own humble way as an artist, I seek to try and do that too. I spent a day or two with uh, Taya Leone, who's an actress here based in New York City, and this was an oil, oil on canvas I did of her reflecting between when she wasn't uh, actually on stage acting. And I, I try to capture something uh, gentle but also very, very focused. She has a laser sharp focus. She's a wonderful human being and um, a gentleness at the same time. This next portrait I, I painted the Duchess of Cambridge's sister two, two years ago. I'm very interested in the roles we all have to play. We all play a role and um, we have to blend that role with our public and private sides of our nature. Is, is it wonderful to be able to just to capture people in where they are in their current incarnation? The next painting is a real jump from the youth of the last two to a lady who was over a hundred years old, and I painted her three weeks before she died. She didn't actually see the final portrait. She passed away. She saw half of it before. It was incredible. She was called Margot Wilkie. She was actually quite a well-known Buddhist, a friend of Bob Thurman. She had been practicing Tibetan Buddhism for 50 years. She lived on the Upper East Side, quite a glamorous life actually, and yet a Buddhist, fascinating lady. Very strong personality, but I feel, looking at her there, she had come to her own sense of destiny and acceptance in this incarnation, and I think there was no fear left. And that's a very nice thing to be able to witness, where, going back to the plastic surgery, we're very frightened. This woman was not frightened. And in a way, it taught me something, that to live a good life is to prepare for death. Thank you.